Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, good morning again, guys. Uh, this is now continuation of our lecture on actually loaded columns. Uh, so, uh, before I proceed with eccentrically loaded columns, I just like to uh, make a summary of what uh, uh, are the columns uh, uh, that we normally use in terms of its application and uh, slenderness uh, aspect okay so these are the types of columns for the load application uh, type sorry for the misspelled uh, word here okay we already finished the actually loaded columns wherein it is also called the concentrically loaded columns so these are the columns that uh, were that the actual forces actually coincides with the longitudinal axis of the member defined by its uh, plastic centroid okay so later on i will show you what this plastic centroid is all about so we're now digging deeper into the to the uh, concept no so if i have here a an elevation view of a column let's say this is a part of the column uh, that we are analyzing normally we have here your uh, longitudinal axis and uh, this again as defined is based on the plastic centroid no okay uh, okay so when the when the force does not coincide with this it is off centered like uh, the the p is off centered here uh, is there a possibility that this P can be off-centered? Uh, yes, because if there's a moment, then uh, this P can actually virtually or imaginatively existing outside the longitudinal axis given by a distance called the eccentricity E there, okay? So this is now called a uh, what an eccentric eccentric column or eccentrically loaded okay column okay so for concentrically loaded columns or actually loaded the p is there so what is now the the uh, consequence of such uh, uh, nature of uh, your column no? so here uh, we expect excuse me class uh, I just check uh, Okay, so to continue, uh, for eccentrically loaded columns, so there is what you call a moment, okay, a bending moment that exists because of the eccentricity E, the bending moment is simply P, okay, or P times E, and since there's a bending moment from the word itself, your column is no longer subjected to actual uh, behavior only but also on flexural behavior okay so this column here now acts on the basis of actual plus bending okay that's why you call this uh, uh, eccentrically loaded columns uh, uh, uniaxial uh, columns okay so uni sorry uniaxial bending columns so this is actual plus bending in one direction so is there a is, is there a possibility to for the column to bend uh, by actually or in two direction so the answer is yes but uh, before we reach that we have to analyze first uh, columns bending on one direction first okay 
So this is now your eccentrically loaded columns. So for other types of columns, we have the short and the long columns. Uh, it has nothing to do with the load type application. So we will refer to additional code requirement on short and long columns after we finish eccentrically loaded columns. So to uh, proceed with our discussion on eccentrically loaded columns, I'd like to define first uh, what is a plastic uh, centroid here. So a plastic centroid is defined as the center of plastic strength of the column section. So we are very familiar with centroids. The only additional uh, word here is the word plastic. So plastic means ultimate okay it's beyond the elastic so when you say plastic range the behavior of the material which is concrete and steel is taken at the range beyond the elastic range and that is the range in which uh, uh, the capacity is actually taken okay so what's the difference between an ordinary centroid and a plastic centroid or what is called the geometric centroid? So in your, in your uh, other lectures, we are familiar with geometric centroids, uh, just like how do we get the neutral axis? How do we get uh, the center of gravity? Those are actually uh, basic concepts using uh, uh, Verignon's theorem on on area moments or force moments to capture the centroids. So it's not different at all when it comes to plastic centroids. The only difference is that now we will be assuming forces or forces in terms of plastic strength. And when you say plastic, we are dealing with the ultimate capacity of your material. So Fc prime and Fy. Okay, actually this is 0.85 Fc prime. This is the, the uh, interpretation of uh, witness uh, capacity. Fc prime, uh, remember the stress block parameter wherein the parabolic was uh, converted into a rectangular. So instead of getting the, the maximum Fc prime, we are using the 0.85 Fc prime. Okay. So these are now the things that we will insert in our computation when we are going to deal with uh, plastic centroids. Okay, so this is an example of a column uh, section wherein the plastic centroid is placed at a certain point uh, here. Okay, so if you will ask me, the geometric centroid is not far from the plastic centroid. They are very near, near to each other, especially when the column is quite uh, symmetrical in terms of uh, shape, material property, and distribution of reinforcement. So, hindi sila nagkakalayo dun sa geometric centroid. No? But still, if you want exact uh, compute, uh, values for our computation on, on, on column analysis, we need to get first your plastic uh, centroids. Okay? Okay, so this is just an example. Later, we will be uh, uh, going back to this example. So, before that, I'd like to define to you some basic formula and the procedure on how to deal with the determination of your uh, plastic centroid. So, we have here that the, the plastic centroid is simply an application of the principle of Varignon. Uh, by taking moments about the plastic centroid, the, uh, the total force multiplied by the distance okay, from a reference point, which is normally a corner or an origin on the column, is simply equivalent to the summation of uh, individual forces multiplied by x. If we are summing of moments about the y-axis, this is the formula, we can get xp. If we are summing moments about the x-axis, this is the formula, we can get yp, okay? Where F, capital, is total plastic strength of the section. F, uh, small, is individual plastic strength 
of the elements or the components of the section. And XP and YP are simply the perpendicular distance from the plastic centroid to the uh, axis concerned. Okay? Okay, for the strength of the material, so again, uh, your FC, uh, force FC is simply equal to uh, 0.85 F' CAG and force FS is equal to FY minus 0.85 F' CAS. Okay? And the total strength is simply the superposition of all of this uh, individual uh, strength or force. So summation uh, FC and summation FS, you just add the two or simply add all the individual components of the concrete and all the individual components of the steel. So note that AS here is the total steel area and AG is the gross area of concrete. Okay, so for the total steel area, I'm referring here the steel area at the... Uh, at a particular steel level, okay, or layer, okay, F prime C and F Y are simply the ultimate strength of both material, okay, let, let us do now some computations on, on this figure here, which is the same as uh, the first figure I I've shown you, we are asked to compute for the location of the plastic centroid PC from the origin uh, using FC prime equals 20 megapascal and FY equals 275 megapascal. Okay, the shape of the section is uh, not uh, regular. Actually, it's not a pure rectangle. It's, a, it's an L-type shape. And the reinforcement are distributed quite uh, symmetrically on the... Uh, on the inside no? of your uh, of your column section okay so we have here three uh, 25 mm diameter bar the area of the bar is 490 uh, millimeter square okay we are asked to find the uh, uh, XP and the YP value so these are the XP and the YP okay so, how do we go over with it? We only use the Varignon's theorem. But I'd like to use the theorem using a tabulated solution because this is much more easy to check and uh, perform uh, compared to uh, equations. Okay, so all you have to do is to uh, tabulate all this, no? components, the mark, the area, the stress, the force, the arm, and the moment, okay? So what are these components? These are, the first is the concrete area here, which is uh, this one. This is the concrete one, and this is concrete two, okay? So still one and still two are levels. Okay, so these are still level or layer. Okay, so we have a marking. Uh, we just mark it one, two, three, four for in the basis of uh, of uh, having a a uh, a uh, description. And the area is simply marked AG1, AG2. Uh, I think uh, you can mark this as AS1 and AS2 if you want. Okay, because these are layers 1, 2. So better if we change this to 1 and 2. Okay. Okay, so anyway, it's just a marking on this. Okay, when we are solving for... For the XP value, we are actually getting moments about the y-axis, no? So, pag ito yung kinukuha mo, 
yung moment mo is refer to this uh, vertical axis here. Okay, so for the uh, stresses, uh, we simply define the maximum stresses, ultimate stresses, as I have defined a while ago. For concrete, it is 0.85 FC prime. And for steel, it is Fy minus 0.85 FC prime. So the reason why we have here a negative 0.85 FC prime is because we want to take uh, compensate for the displaced concrete, okay? The area of displaced concrete. I explained to you that uh, last time. Also in your beams, I explained to you why there is an N minus 1. So this is just like uh, subtracting the, the uh, concrete inside uh, the steel bars because that concrete uh, reduces the area G here, okay? So always uh, you have an Fy minus 0.85 Fc prime here. Okay, for the force, we simply multiply the area by the stress and for the moment arm, we simply get it from the figure, okay? So what is X1? X2, so we refer... Uh, the centroid of the components from the vertical axis. Okay, so what is the uh, value of uh, uh, x1? So x1 is actually the concrete one, no? So the centroid of this concrete, if I will uh, put it here, is simply has a distance of uh, from the vertical axis. If this is uh, uh, 100. This is 50, 50, because this is uh, 50 also. It's actually symmetrical, no? So this becomes 50, okay? It's just a coincidence that it's equal to this, no? But in cases, uh, in other cases, it might not be equal. Also, your x2, this one here, is simply this distance. From here up to uh, this point is simply 150. Okay, so we can measure it here. This is 150. And for the steel requirement, let's still level uh, layer 1 here. We get a 50 value. And uh, layer 2 here, we get a 150 value. So this is just a coincidence again that uh, uh, the values are uh, the same. Okay, so to get the uh, moment, we simply multiply the force times the arm. You get the moment here. And then, uh, uh, taking the sum of the force and the moment, we get your XP. And how do we uh, do it? So we get it from this uh, uh, field tables. No? So the value of XP is obtained by simply dividing the sum of the moments by the sum of the forces. So here I already uh, tabulated the, the values. Area is uh, 200 by 100. Okay, so this is uh, simply 200, the area of the concrete this is simply uh, 100 by 100. Okay, this is the uh, area of a 2 diameter uh, area of uh, 25 diameter. So 490 times 2 is 980 and this is 1825. Okay, the stress is computed. This is uh, 0.85 FC prime. This is Fy minus 0.85 FC prime. Then you multiply area times stress, you get the force. So it's easy. You multiply arm by the force, you get the moment. Then you add them, you add them, you divide 74105000 divided by 889260, you get this value. Okay, so it's not difficult to compute for a plastic centroid location uh, really, for as long as you know how to do it. Okay, for the computation of YP, uh, what will change here is only the moment arm Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and uh, you can get now your value of YP, which is 102.4504. Remember that these are referred from the origin uh, as indicated in 
in your drawing always take a look at the drawing before answering the question because i can change the location of the origin from this point this point to that point okay so in your examination you have to be very very careful okay so that uh, ends the explanation on how to get the plastic centroid uh, this is just an initial requirement for us to be able to analyze uh, eccentrically loaded columns and the uh, uh, we will proceed with the the, the real analysis uh, next meeting uh, on how to get the moment capacity of eccentrically loaded columns but we have to discuss uh, further into uh, a lot of concept first uh, for a better understanding on it okay so thank you very much uh, uh, if you have concerns just uh, call my attention